Good day, learners! You have learned in the previous lesson that the moon has eight phases, namely, new moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, and waning crescent. The moon goes these eight phases in 29 and a half days. The period it takes for the moon to complete the phases is called month. Do you know that the moon does not produce its own light? The moon only reflects the light coming from the sun, which is one particular example of a star. The sun is an average size star. It is the star closest to the earth, that is why we can see it. Now, we will learn more about the stars, particularly the group of stars that form definite patterns in the sky. So we have constellations. These are groups of stars that form clear patterns in the sky. The ancient people first observed these groups of stars as outlines of animals and other objects. They found it easier to locate and remember constellations when they tried to find a clear and particular pattern the way a group of stars are engaged. For example, in the Northern Hemisphere, they have observed a group of stars which they thought looked like a dragon and so they named this group as Draco. In the Southern Hemisphere, they noticed a group of stars that seemingly form a cross and so they called it as Southern Cross. The International Astronomical Union made a list of the official modern constellations. There are 88 constellations on the list and many of these were discovered by the ancient Greeks. We have Ursa Major. It resembles a big bear and is the third largest constellation in the night sky. It includes the Big Deeper which is composed of the seven stars Al-Qaeda, al and Mizar, al Migres, Fekda, Merak, and Dubi. Next, we have Ursa Minor. It is a little bear containing a group of stars known as Lil Deeper. The handle of the deeper serves as a little bear's tail, and the deeper's cup is the bear's tie. The most famous star in the Ursa Minor is the Polaris. Polaris is also called as the North Star. Some constellations are named after Greek mythology legends. Two of them are Cassiopeia, the queen, and Orion, the hunter. Cassiopeia. It consists of five stars that seem to form the letter W. It represents the Queen Cassiopeia of the mythical kingdom of Ethiopia. Orion. It is one of the most recognizable constellations in the night sky and is visible throughout the world. Three of its stars form
form its belt. Orion's belt is also an asterism. On Orion's right shoulder is a red supergiant star called Betelgeuse. A bluish-white star called Rigel is found on Orion's left knee. The Polar Constellation There are some constellations that can be seen only during certain seasons of the year. These are called North Polar Constellations and South Polar Constellations. The constellation nearest to the center of the Earth can be seen throughout the year. The people living in the Northern Hemisphere see constellations different from those living in the Southern Hemisphere. North Polar Constellation some of the North Polar constellations include the following Cassiopeia, Cepheus, Ursa Major, and Ursa Minor. Cepheus Cepheus is the 27th largest constellation in the northern sky. It is faint, but its definite shape makes it easy to locate if you look in the north on August and September evenings. South Polar Constellation Some of the South Polar Constellations include the following Carina, Santorus, and Crooks. Carina Carina constellation is located in the southern sky. Carina used to be part of the much larger constellation Argonavis along with the constellations Pupis and Vela. The constellation represented the mythical ship Argo. Centaurus Centaurus is one of the largest constellations in the southern sky. It represents the centaur, the half-man, half-horse creature in Greek mythology. Centaurus contains two of the top ten brightest stars in the sky, Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri. And Crux the constellation Crux, or the Cross, is a constellation centered on four stars in the southern sky in a bright portion of the Milky Way. It is among the most easily distinguished constellations. The brilliant cross is formed by bright stars, making it one of the most familiar sights to southern hemisphere observers. We come now to the usefulness of constellations. Since ancient times, constellations are always helpful to people. They use the appearance of certain stars to forecast the weather. When stars are visible, they expect fair weather. But, when stars are hidden behind the clouds, the next day may be cloudy or rainy. Constellations are helpful to navigators too. Navigators use their knowledge in constellations in the conduct of their work. When they are lost at sea, they refer to Polaris, which is in Orsa Minor. They use Polaris as their guiding star. Polaris is a fixed star. It is located at the north. By using Polaris as guide, it is easy to find south, east, 
and west directions. Recap In constellation, we have north polar constellations and south polar constellations. Cassiopeia, Cepheus, Ursa Major, and Ursa Minor composed the North Polar Constellation. While Carina, Centaurus, and Crux composed the South Polar Constellations. That ends our lesson for today. I hope you learned something from the discussion. Kita kids in the next lessons. Until next time, goodbye.